Carotid disease is a problem with the artery in the base of the neck that goes to feed the brain, so it's a very important artery. Most carotid disease is atherosclerotic, so it's narrowing of that artery. It is actually a major cause of stroke, and stroke can obviously be very debilitating. It turns out that the degree of the narrowing, which we call stenosis, is actually predictive of the chance you'll have a stroke. So we can measure the degree of narrowing in our office with a non-invasive ultrasound and predict the risk that someone might have a stroke. There are a couple of other diseases that we see in the carotid, such as dissection, but the main problem that we see and treat in our office is atherosclerosis of the carotid. Not everybody needs an intervention. Many times medication and lifestyle changes can keep you from having a stroke, but it's very important to know what's in your neck and get an ultrasound to see how severe the narrowing is. There's really no symptoms until it gets severe it starts causing things such as a mini stroke or stroke. The best way that we pick it up, because most people don't complain of anything, is uh, to listen to the neck for abnormal physical exam findings. We'll kind of hear a little whisper in their neck and family doctors can pick that up and they often do. Uh, but we have to pick it up with an ultrasound. So really what we do, we look at a group of individuals of the right age, let's just say people over 65, and have risk factors for carotid disease. Smokers, diabetics, high blood pressure, uh, people have arterial disease in other parts of the body. And then we just do an ultrasound. It's a cheap, very effective way to screen and look at individuals and it's very accurate. And so that's how we do it. But it's, it's one of those diseases that will sneak up on people. They never know they have it. And then they all of a sudden they'll have a stroke and then it's a catastrophe. So carotid disease is treated in two main ways. Uh, ever since the 1950s, really, we've been doing carotid endarterectomies. Or essentially what that is, is you have an incision here on the neck, and we essentially we dissect down to the artery, open up the artery, and essentially scrape out that plaque from the artery and close everything back up. The second option is something called TCAR, or transcarotid artery revascularization. And what this entails essentially is deployment of a stent across that narrowing in the carotid artery. We make a very small incision at the base of the neck, and through that we're able to access the carotid artery and we're able to deploy that stent to open up the artery. So after surgery, most patients get admitted to the hospital for about one night uh, for observation. Typically people will go home the following day, um, barring any unexpected changes with their blood pressure or things like that that may require an extra day or two in the hospital. 90% will go home the next day. Typically it's a pretty easy recovery, the neck incision heals really well, um, and things will be pretty much back to normal within a, a month or two. There are several lifestyle changes you can make, and these are similar to the lifestyle changes you would make if you had heart disease or peripheral artery disease. The primary and the foremost goal is to quit smoking and abstain from all forms of nicotine, vaping, chewing tobacco, but especially cigarettes. That is far and beyond the most important thing to abstain from. In addition to that, if you have diabetes, to work very closely with your endocrinologist and your primary care doctor to make sure your blood sugars are as well controlled as possible. Also, should take your medications. Most patients with carotid artery disease are on some sort of antiplatelet therapy, whether that's aspirin or Plavix or another medication. It's very, very important to take this. Your cholesterol needs to be optimized, or usually through a form of medication that we call a statin. Uh, of course, you can take on exercise and heart healthy diet as well. The question I get asked a lot is what will happen to me if I get my carotid arteries treated? And I have to remind patients the primary goal of this operation is to prevent a stroke. Some patients may not see a difference in their lifestyle, but what they do see is a long-term risk reduction so they don't have a, a devastating or life-threatening stroke.